we're at Kathmandu Airport, about to fly to Lukla, which is pretty much the start of our trek where we're going to head up to Tembochi Monastery. I've been told that Lukla Airport is considered one of the most dangerous airports in the world because of its short and steep runway. Once saying a few quick words to whoever would listen, I prepared myself for what was an amazingly beautiful, yet very intimidating introduction to the Himalayas. For many people, Nepal is one of those bucket list destinations, a sovereign state dominated by a mountainous realm. It's home to some of the Earth's highest peaks, with many of them exceeding over 23,000 feet. You either come here for enlightenment or to conquer. And thanks to World Expeditions, I was here for a bit of both. This is the start of our trek. The first stop, Ghat, Manju, Namchi, and then our final destination is Tembochi Monastery. There's only one road in and out, and you'll find everything on it from Sherpas, yaks, cows, transporting food, water, anything. So it's busy all day, every day. After reaching Gut and finding our camp already set up for us, we took the afternoon off to do some further exploring and take in the stunning landscape. Morning. What a night, hey? Slept like a dream. Woke up to the sound of the river. Slept so good. Day two, this is it. Let's go, let's do it. You forget you're doing it rough after eating breakfast cooked by your own chef in a heated lodge, but it definitely was a primo start to what was going to be a long day's trek. As we made our way to Monjo, the scenery was simply breathtaking. Check it out, come closer. Just over there is a sheer drop straight down. No guardrails. Despite our World Expedition's guide warning us tomorrow's hike was going to be the hardest of the trip, there was a building anticipation of being able to stand in the shadow of the Earth's tallest point. You'll find these suspension bridges all throughout your Himalaya trek. This one's about probably 100 metres long, 100 metres off the water. And they're used to ferry everything across. But you don't want to be afraid of heights. Check it out. This is the halfway holy crap point. <laughs> because it's the point where you come up and say, holy crap, I'm only halfway. They said today's hike would be challenging, to say the least. To say the least. Bugger. Absolutely bugger. But as we got higher and the air got thinner, we were rewarded with a view of our planet's highest point, Mount Everest. That's it, straight through there. It's all yours. Take it. Banging on those walls, would you open up the door? On the long walk home. The next morning, we awoke in Nemshi Bazaar, a busy service town. It's a popular base for climbers and expeditions wanting to acclimatise and prepare for further treks. And at 3,720 metres above sea level, it's home to one of the highest airports in the world. Further up the mountain, we came to the highest hotel, the Everest View. After three days of hiking to an altitude of over 3,800 metres, a cold beer at the Mount Everest Hotel in front of Mount Everest, I reckon I've really earned this. Cheers to the rest of the world below me. After enjoying the shops and marketplace during our rest day in Namchi, we continued on to our destination of Temboche Monastery. The walk was spectacular and gave us some amazing views of Everest and the surrounding peaks. This is the route you take to Everest Base Camp, so on the way, we stopped to catch our breath at the memorial to Tenzing Norgay. The Sherpa, who along with Sir Edmund Hillary, were the first to reach the summit of Everest in 1953. Well, I am stoked to finally be here. It's been a hell of a journey getting here. But here we are, Tembochi Monastery. Founded in 1916 by Lama Gulu, it's home to about 40 monks. Right in the eye line of Everest, perfect. It's interesting to note that unless you have been here or plan to come here, this may be the only time you get to see inside this amazing place. Filming is generally a strict no-no, but fortunately, our guide had pulled some strings and we were given special permission. The 
34 kilometer eight day round trek back to Lukla is no walk in the park. And upon my return, I had a genuine feeling of accomplishment. But it took a back seat to a special moment I shared with a few small locals when I got to play an impromptu gig at the appropriately named Schoolhouse in the Clouds, founded by Sir Edmund Hillary. It was my 30th birthday and I was on top of the world. I didn't expect my 30s to be this cool. Yeah, that sort of memory will stick with you forever. Forever. It's funny, when you fly into Nepal and the airport says it's not for you to change Nepal, but Nepal to change you, that easily changed my life forever. I'm going for a cold beer and a hot shower. I'll see you later. Love this adventure? Don't forget to check out all the adventures in your own backyard. NT, share our story.